Hello, everybody. This is Lisa. I hope everyone is doing great and doing the best they can, faring out and the way things are going in this world and just being in oneness and peace with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everybody. I'm so happy to be back with you all. Been a little bit busy lately, but still seeking the strength of God and believing on God and the Son. You all want to come to you today about something that's really, really needed. Um, it's Lisa's Teachable Moment, and this is about famine. This is about being prepared in famine and famines in the Bible. Jesus gives us warnings, you all. So um, even if you're Christian or not Christians, Jesus gives us warnings in the Bible that we are to be prepared. Okay, so famines was in the Bible. You had Second Kings and Amos and different places in the Bible. And I'm just going to talk on the subject and I'm going to give you some items that I found in my cupboards that um, you all might can, you know, look at and that can help you. And um, some expiration dates on things and how long items may last. But um, we really, really, times are really, really going to be really, really tough. And we won't want to be um, caught without. So just because you might say, I'm a Christian, I don't have any worries, no worries. Jesus say, be wise. He says, be wise, not foolish. You know, Solomon asked for wisdom. You know, Lord asked him, what did he want? He said he wished for wisdom. So this is to be for us to be wise as Solomon for wisdom you all. So let's go into prayer before we start everything. And I hope that this blesses you all and your families. Heavenly Father, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior. We thank you that you send your son. Lord Jesus, let your Holy Ghost fire. Lord Jesus, be around us, Father, in our families, in our lives. Let us seek your face continually, Lord. Let us be wise, Lord, and not foolish, Lord. Lord Jesus, let us have the things that are needed. Lord Jesus, just let us seek your face continually and read your word, Father. Lord Jesus, just bless us and we welcome you in this place. We welcome your holy presence. Lord Jesus, we send the angel for you. Petition for Michael and the one angels to come down with their flaming swords of all rankers and divisions, Father. The black and the unclean thing that want to hinder this video, Father. Lord Jesus, may we be covered in the videos, covered out sender and the receivers, covered in the blood. Yes, everyone, I want to give you something that I found, and I have this in my blog. Um, LisaFleet.blogspot.com. We talk about famines. Famines were an unexpected, irregular cultural hazard that calmed the lives of many who dwelt in the promised land between 1850 BC and AD 46. The primary source from which to gain insights into elementary problems faced by the ancient Hebrews in surviving as a cultural group is the Bible. This is for over 2,000 years, you all. Food referenced in the Bible, food schemes of those who lived in the promised land. Food problems and famines reflected regional and local politics, changing technologies, the fusion processes, and the general living conditions of a place. Ten famine periods and almost two millennial created social disruption. Fear and mass death in a promised land with an environment very conducive to the support of human beings. Cultural decisions, indecisions, and indifferences were the major factors in biblical famine formation. The most appalling and shocking catastrophic famines were experienced in major urban centers. A portent for the um, 21st century, uh, century. Amos 8:11. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord God. When I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. 
Matthew 24, 7, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Genesis 12, 10, now there was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was severe in the land. Genesis 41, 53, 57. The seven years of plenty that occurred in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began to come, as Joseph had said. There was famine in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph, what he says to you do. So when the famine had spread all over the land, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. For the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Moreover, all the earth came to Egypt to Joseph to buy grain because the famine was severe over all the earth. So let us be prepared as to what's to come. Jesus said we ought to be wise and not foolish you all. So you all may you all be blessed with this. Now I want to give you some items that I found in my cupboard um, to help you to prepare. First, I want to give you this is white a can of white chicken breast, and this is um, Rich Farms, Richfield Farms white chicken breast. This is um, chicken breast in water, and this says this can last to be used by January 14th, 2022. So we only in 2020 right now. So this is about a year and a half that this can be used for. But these are the type of items that are good to, to use as well. I have chicken with broth. Chicken with broth last 20, 2022. I have here a can of tomato soup. We always have, uh, it's good to um, stock up with canned goods. I like the pop tops, which are easy because I have a hand can opener. I hate that can opener, so I like pop top tops. It's good to have cans with pop tops on them. Here I have a can of um, pinto beans. Lasts for over a year. To, uh, pinto beans. Here I have Southgate. Beef stew, yum yum, and this can last for 2023. You all, so this is stew with uh, potatoes in it and carrots and meat. I have things like corn, cream style corn, lasts for a while. We have um, this is for people that are vegan. I have um, Adamami spaghetti, organic. Vegan spaghetti and, th and things like this you can put in jars, okay, to preserve the top, good top, still top on them. Jars, my favorite grits, always can keep some grits for a while. These things you can preserve. I have things such as sea salt, the sea salt grinder. Salt preserve thing. Sea salt is the best salt to use. I have Uncle Ben's rice. We have rice that we can put in jars. In the jar. I have things such as instant potato flakes. Things like this is good to have. Instant potato flakes. We can put these in jars as well. Collard greens, 2023. These is good old collard greens, some good old vegetables that can last for a couple of years. Something like grape jelly, 2022. You all. I have regular spaghetti to put in the jars. I have macaroni and cheese. Sorry. I have so much stuff that I found in my cupboards. 
macaroni and cheese. I want to go out and get some more things like beans and rice. I usually keep rice, but I don't seem to have any. Cornstarch, you all. It's good to keep cornstarch for stews. Um, you can make beef stews and freeze them. Things, um, cornstarch. And if you run out of electricity, you know, things, you can have like peanut butter. I have a lot of peanut butter in my house just for hard times. We have plenty of peanut butter. You can have your peanut butter with your jelly and some crackers. I have crackers as well upstairs. I have things such as like green tea to help you green tea. Things like that. It's good to have on hand. And don't forget your probiotics, you all. Things like you want to have to last you for a while. Probiotics. On pills. These things can last a couple of years. And things like vitamin D3. Vitamin D3, your vitamins. And I have an acid pills. An acid pills to last this last to February 2023. And we have things that can some things we have that can last up to 30 years. Now I also have a famine menu that's on my blog. And it says three slices of whole wheat bread, lunch and dinner, one pot of oatmeal for breakfast, varied with spices and fruit from the orchard or hydrated nuts. You can, if you have a um, thing that dehydrates foods, you can have nuts, one pot of rice dinner, one pot of beans dinner, varied with spices, vegetables from the garden, one glass of milk, in addition per week, one pint of jam. One spaghetti dinner with hamburger, four pots of soup from leftovers, um, soup for a year, you know, leftover soup, seven jars, sprouting seeds, rotation, um, popcorn, potato flakes. I showed you the potato flakes. I showed you the potato flakes here. Popcorn is always good. Can of refried, uh, refried beans. Can of white flour. Now you can have rolled oats. Peanut butter. Showed you peanut butter. Can hamburger. For me, it's beef stew. The <laughs> granulated sugar. Honey. I have honey upstairs as well. Powdered milk. Now I ran out of powdered milk. I'm going to get some more milk. Especially if you have little babies, you can have powdered milk, which is always good. It lasts for a long time. Spaghetti sauce, spaghetti noodles, multivitamins, as I showed you. Multivitamins. In a dire emergency, you may not have electricity or it could be subject to blackouts. In that case, start your family menu using less amounts of food than you'll need. Since you won't be able to refrigerate the leftovers with each meal and a little more food until you're consuming everything within one day and tummies are all fairly satisfied. Now I found this menu from a, a site, a lady, she was a mom and she, I think she found this off a governmental site about this famine list, you all. So, you know, in the Bible, Jesus gives us scriptures um, in the Bible, you know about famines and all, and, and it's just good to be prepared. Because I think sometimes as Christians, we, we, we tend to take things for granted. You know, we tend to say, well, God's got me. I'm blessed and highly free. Okay. But Jesus says, be wise. Okay. We ought to be wise. We're not to take them for granted. Because things are coming and it's going to get worse out here. It's, it's prophecy. You know, it's, it's, it's going to get worse. Um, before God returns, you all. Um, someone close to me had a dream. 
And in the vision, a vision, you can call it, in a vision, they were put in, excuse me, pop up, you all. They were, were put, put in different instances where the Lord showed them that they were in a supermarket. And in the supermarket, they they were going by last names. Okay. In the supermarket, you had to be called by families by your last names. And the individual said that when they were in the supermarket, they were in the aisle trying to get some fruit. And um, but they couldn't get everything at the market. Like things like the fruit you couldn't get. And the individual also told me that um, President Trump was still in office in the vision. And um, they don't remember what he was saying, but he was speaking about some things. I don't know if it could have been on, on the news or what have you. But um, I've heard about a dream from someone else before. Um, somebody on YouTube. Uh, had a vision where you would be in the, in the markets by your last name. So sometimes God give people similar dreams or you know for things to come. And so it's for us to be prepared, you know. And individuals said it was another instance where they were in um, the top part of the house and family members was in the bottom part of the house and they were sad. But the place where they were. Um, they were kind of happy and they were in a higher part of the house. So I feel like this is interpretation that they will go through something, but in the end, they'll be blessed. Okay. So it is important for us to believe in Christ Jesus, son of God. He sent a son for us that we may live. But Jesus say, when you believe on him with your whole heart, repent, turn from your wickedness, that he will heal you, you know. Now, things are allowed to come about that's destructive. But even through this, the crisis, people can become closer to the Lord. You know, sometimes it's your valleys that will bring you closer to God. Let me read you this. Nehemiah 5, 3. There were others who said, we are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards, and our houses that we might get grain because of the famine. Second Kings 625, there was a great famine in Samaria and behold, they besieged it until donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and a fourth of calf of doves doing um, calf of, I'm sorry, doves dung for five shekels of silver. Amos 8, 11, 12. Through 12. Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine for bread or thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They will go to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. Ezekiel 5, 16. When I send against them the deadly arrows of famine, which were for the destruction of those whom I will send to destroy you. Then I will also intensify the famine upon you and break the staff of bread. Joel 1, 11 through 13. Be ashamed, O farmers, well, O vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field is destroyed. The vine dries up and the fig tree fails, the pomegranate, the palm also, and the apple tree. All the trees of the field dry up indeed, rejoicing dries up from the sons of men. Give yourselves with sackcloth and lament, O priest, well, O ministers of the altar, 
Come spend the night in sackcloth for ministers in my, of my God. For the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. So everyone, Jesus is calling us to repent. You know, a lot of devastations coming on the land. We have earthquakes and devastations. And we are to endure. He said, if we stand and endure. He said, what? be watchful. You know, we don't want to be caught. Jesus coming like a thief in the night. You know, for unbelievers, we want to be believers in Christ. We want to believe on his word. Meditate on his word, read his word, pray over our families, our loved ones, ourselves, our homes, our lands, our nations, cities, countries, counties, governments. We're in for some things to come, everybody. And, um, you know, some people say um, be encouraging. Well, I am being encouraging and I am being wise. And um, I petition you all to be wise as well. Um, Jesus gives us all kind of signs in the Bible. Um, I had a relative who was a strong Christian who passed away in 2016, who prophesied some things to me and said that 2020 will be a rough year and to make sure that I had items. And um, just because we call ourselves Christians doesn't mean to be foolish. Don't take Jesus for granted. Don't test God. He gives us so many warnings. Um, you know, Jesus sent the raven, you know, for bread. And he will provide because he's the provider. But let's not be foolish. Let's be wise. And Matthew it says, Matthew 10, it says, be wise as a serpent. So we are to be wise, you all. Not take Jesus for granted. Just because you've healed or you saved, delivered. Jesus say, be wise. And I keep saying this because it's very, very important. I think as Christians, we all think everything is glory, 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 glory. But Jesus say, be watchful. He say, when the signs come, know that my redemption is near. Guess what, everybody? Look up because the redemption is near. And I pray for those who don't know the Lord to come into the presence of God, to ask God to forgive you, repent of your sins, deny yourselves, pick up the cross, and follow the Lord. You can ask Jesus to reveal Him, His Spirit to you. Because Jesus is spirit. He says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And um, hard times is coming. You know, it's a lot of things happening. People are being evicted. They're losing their homes, their jobs, families, loved ones. Um, I know people that work in healthcare facilities and hospitals, and a lot of people are ODing. You know. So I think they just trying to give up on life. You know, people are in, in alcoholism and drugs and it's, it's so sad. And I just want to pray that you all stay firm in the Lord. Regardless of what's around you. Some people could say that's easy to, to say when you're going through things. But Jesus says, be sure to know that I overcame the devil and he overcame the world and we can overcome. If we seek Jesus continually, pray to him always. Don't take our minds off of Christ. Accept him in our hearts. So let me say a prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I welcome you.
into the presence of each and every person who is ruling this world, that you may give them wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and courage. Father God, just let them be in oneness with you, Father. May they seek your face continually, O oh God. May they not take you for granted, O oh Lord, and be wise, Father. Lord Jesus, let them be, have wisdom as Solomon did, Lord. Lord Jesus, give them patience. Father God, let them be obedient. Let us be obedient. Lord Jesus, help me to help others, Lord. Help others to help me, Father, to pray for me, and I pray for them, Lord. Lord Jesus, Jesus, let us put the prayers up on the altars for you, Lord. That we bind everything trying to come up against us and our families, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, help us, O oh God. Help us, Father, to keep us from falling, Father. Keep us from temptation, Father. Father, you are worthy to be praised. Let us reverence you. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue of us that Jesus Christ is Lord, He is Lord, He is Lord. Sing with me, you all. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everyone, may you all have a blessed evening. May God bless you all real, real good and cover you with the blood. You all, see you next time. Bye-bye, you all. Love you.